Hey Networkers, it's Josh here, and I was fortunate enough to go see Coco a few weeks ago. I'm not bragging, I'm just saying, I gotta go see it. It was a fantastic film, uh, steeped in Mexican culture, but I was wondering if that would translate to box office gold, especially here in the United States, because truthfully, we don't have that great of a relationship with Mexico. Let's talk about it. So first and foremost, this is a Pixar film. It has the pizza truck, the A113, uh, all the different Easter eggs that you want from a Pixar film. And this film is beautiful. It just looks so great and 10,000 times better than the 2014 Book of Life film that I know a bunch of people are probably going to compare this film to. And like most Pixar films, this is probably going to be a film where you want to bring a box of tissues. I know I needed it, especially in the back half of this film. Again, fantastic film. And where it really shines is its depiction of Mexican culture and the use of the Spanish language. So Coco started out as a project six years ago uh, with Lee Unkrich and his entire team making several trips to Mexico, especially during Dia de los Muertos, or the Day of the Dead. They opted to showcase small town Mexico. This isn't Mexico City, this isn't Tijuana, this is small town Mexico. Uh, mira, mira, they're setting up for tonight. The music competition for Dia de Muertos. You wanna be like your hero? You should sign up. Uh-uh, my family would freak. And this movie references things that Mexicans may see and they might understand that the rest of the world might not, like Alabrejas or Afrendas, and the celebration of Dia de los Muertos as a whole. Coco doesn't sugarcoat Dia de los Muertos. For the living, it's a celebration of ancestry and heritage, and for the dead, the skeletons in this film, it's a way to either be remembered or to be forgotten. This is a very serious holiday. This is not Mexican Halloween full of candy. Beyond just seeing Mexico and Coco, they want you to hear Coco as well. And this might be the hardest sell to most moviegoers not of Spanish or Mexican heritage. Because, let's face it, not a lot of us are sitting around listening to mariachi music. And Pixar didn't take the choice in picking someone that everyone would know, like a Ricky Martin or someone like a Carlos Santana, to put together a song for this album to make a huge pop hit. What you also might notice in this film is that they use a ton of Spanglish, or a lot of Spanish words mixed in with English. Uh, I would say probably about 10 to 15 percent of this film is made up of the Spanish language, and for some people that is a turnoff. But I felt like it just added to the film more. If you've never tuned in to Network 1901 before, whether it be our podcasts or our YouTube channel, like this, you might not know that we cover a lot of social and political issues that relate to Disney or other geek cultures. But I think about those things when I go see a Disney movie or any kind of other film at the theaters, and Coco made me feel things. When I watched Coco, I thought about the proposed wall and Donald Trump and the possibility of millions of Americans not necessarily loving Mexicans or Mexican culture or a Pixar love letter like this film is to Mexico. They're bringing drugs, they're bringing crime, they're rapists, and some, I assume, are good people. Leon Crick started this film six years ago, long before Donald Trump thought about running for office, long before he was running for office or eventually became president. But I can't help but think that during that run and during that becoming president part, that the movie changed and molded and became something a little bit different, showed off a little bit more of Mexico. Like Wally, -E, Coco doesn't really hit you over the head with its message, but I think it does have a message. The Mexicans have families, they make art, they make music, they have their own celebrities, they're a special culture. But we should understand that culture and embrace that culture instead of building a wall and shutting it out. Unlike Zootopia, this is not a film about creating a better worldview, but it is a non-European story that we should care about, and that we should care about just as much as those classic European fairy tales. As of this recording right now, Coco is the number one all-time film in Mexico. 
And that makes sense because it's about Mexico. It's that love letter that Pixar has made to Mexico. But like I said in the beginning, can that translate to the United States box office or to a worldwide box office? I have my doubts, but I would love to see this film soar and showcase Mexico as something other than illegal drug dealing border runners. I'd love to see it as an embracing of a culture that we don't necessarily talk about, especially in a positive light. I really hope that if you see this video, then you go see this film. I, I can't speak volumes enough about how great Pixar's Coco was. And if you already saw the film, make sure to leave a comment down below on this video. Let me know what you thought of the movie, what you think of this video of Donald Trump of the wall, and what you think Coco relates to it. If you're new here or you just haven't yet, please subscribe. We have three videos a week coming out, plus three different podcasts. You can check out the podcast feed down below or head over to network1901.com for all the things that we do here over at Network 1901. And if you want to help us out, you can share this video or give it a like. Or uh, if you want to help us out monetarily, you can buy one of our shirts like this one. It's a hot cocoa shirt. Get it? It's hot cocoa. Okay, anyways, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. And uh, just remember, keep on moving, people.